Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 21 of Azure Zero to Hero series. And in this video, we will start a journey with Azure serverless. So these are going to be three episodes series, day 21, day 22 and day 23, wherein day 21, that is today's video, we will learn what is serverless, why serverless and what are some of the DevOps related use cases for serverless. In day 22, that is the next video of this series, we will implement cloud cost management. How does a DevOps engineer perform cloud cost optimization for an organization, the serverless way? Then in day 23, the next video of the series, we will learn how does a DevOps engineer manage the cloud configuration against the compliance guidelines and security guidelines of the organization. We will also use serverless for this video. So it's going to be exciting three days. So please watch all three episodes. And now without any further delay, let's get started and understand what is serverless. First of all, the term serverless does not mean no server, but what it actually means is dynamic provisioning and deletion or whatever you would like to call, but dynamic creation and deletion of the servers or dynamic allocation and deallocation of the servers. Let's take an example so that you understand. Let's say there is a developer and developer requests for a Azure blob storage. So you have created some Terraform scripts for the developers and these developers are creating their infrastructure within uh, the AWS account. Let's say you have a dev, I mean, Azure account. Let's say you have a dev Azure account and within this dev Azure account, developers have access to create resources. So one of the developers has initiated request for Azure blob storage. And in your organization, you have a requirement. It can be the compliance or it can be because of uh, security guidelines. The requirement is that any blob storage that is created, the storage should have public access disabled. But what this developer has done and similarly other developers, you know, because they have a very critical requirement or urgent requirement, they have created the Azure blob storages and they forgot that the public has to be disabled. Similarly, let's say there is another thing such as, you know, you always have to, uh, in the blob storage, there is hot and cold life cycle, right? Even in S3 buckets, you have the life cycle management where, you know, you can reduce the cost of the storage by making sure you have the proper life cycle management of the storage, which we have discussed in S3 and also the storage services in Azure. Again, developers, what they have done because they have very critical requirement, they did not bother about even managing the hot and cold life cycle management and they have created the Azure blob storage. So if one developer has created, probably it's not a big problem. But if all the developers are not practicing these standards, then one is it is affecting the cost of your organization. Second, it is also affecting the security of your organization because the public access is also enabled and life cycle is also not selected as per the requirement. So both cost is affected and security is also affected. Now, as a DevOps engineer, how do you make sure that the cost is also optimized and security is also managed. One is you can write some scripts. Let's say you are good with Python. And you know that blob storage has an API. 
which can be interacted using the Azure CLI, SDK, or you can also interact with the APIs. Let's say you are good with Python. And what you can do is you can write some Python scripts and verify how many blob storages, that is, you know, how many containers are available. And you can verify what is the state of each container. Probably you can write, run this every day or the better thing is you can run this when a blob storage is created. Now, instead of running it every day, what you can do is whenever a developer creates a blob storage, you can write a Python script. And what this Python script should do is it has to verify that public access is disabled and the life cycle is also as per the requirement. If you write this Python script, and if you host this in a virtual machine, what happens is that developers might create this blob storages or containers, let's say 10 times a day or five times a day. And if you are using a virtual machine and if you're writing a Python script on top of this virtual machine, the problem is that Azure will charge you for this virtual machine 24 by seven. And here I just gave you example of one particular thing that is blob storage or container. Similarly, you can create these Python scripts and you can manage the cloud cost and security for all the Azure resources. This is just for one particular resource. It can be for virtual machines. It can be for the volumes. It can be for the storage, right? It can be for your EKS cluster. Imagine how many number of scripts that you will end up writing and for each virtual machine, you will be charged 24 by seven. Whereas the requirement is that you only execute this Python script when a blob storage is created. Other times, this virtual machine is a stale virtual machine. Nobody is using it. The Python application is running and Azure is charging you for this. Right? So the better approach that you can use is you can go with the serverless model. So as DevOps engineers, what we do is that we go with an approach called event driven serverless model. You know, serverless is also used by developers. Serverless is used by data engineers, but I'm specifically talking here with respect to DevOps engineers only. So you can create event driven serverless model that is whenever a blob storage is created or whenever a container which is a blob is created then you can trigger the event whenever the event is created you can say that provision a serverless in azure serverless is provisioned by the I mean, uh, serverless uh, server is provisioned by a resource or service called as Azure function. So whenever this particular action performed, then according to the event, you can trigger the Azure function and this Azure function, which can be a Python code or it can be a Node.js code. This will execute, it will verify Okay, if the container has or if the blob has the uh, public access disabled and if the blob has the life cycle as per the requirement of your organization and if both of them are met, then it will not do anything. If this is not met, you can also correct it right using the Python APIs just how you fetch the information. Similarly, you can also correct it or auto heal. Right. And once this action is completed, this is dynamically provisioned and it is also dynamically deleted. That is once the action is performed, the resources are lost. You don't have to worry about it. And Azure only charge you for the amount of time this serverless functions are used this way. If you only consider about one example, the example that I've taken is about blob 
if you only pick up this example then you might feel that abhishek i am not saving lot of thing here that is if you are only talking about one virtual machine how much that would save for my organization but imagine you have 100 serverless functions there are organizations which have hundreds of serverless functions and if they create virtual machine they will end up paying for this 100 virtual machines when the actual execution is only perform let's say 10 or 15 times a day so to avoid that you can use serverless functions using the event driven methodology and only when the event is met the serverless functions are created which are nothing but servers but dynamically created and deleted this will perform the required action and they get destroyed so you save lot of cost for your organization not just cost but also maintenance right with virtual machines you also have some maintenance which is also <coughs> you know maintenance is also lost if you are using serverless and in next classes that is day 22 and day 23 when we perform the cloud cost optimization and when you perform the configuration management that is the cloud configuration management according to the compliance and security standards of your organization for both of these we will use the serverless approach you will also understand how to write this serverless functions we will be using python right so you will learn how to write the serverless functions in python and how to create this events because we are talking about event driven approach right so i'll also explain you when someone creates a blob storage or i will take even a better example when someone creates and your event is met how can you trigger the azure function which creates a serverless function for you and it executes automatically destroys we will see all of this in live in the next video so please watch the next two videos they are going to be very important and you can also showcase these projects in your resume thank you so much for watching today's video see you all in the next one take care